Hello and welcome back. This is section 12, Integrating Other Frameworks. In the previous section, we covered client and server-side debugging. In this section, we'll take a look at adding PayPal integration, connecting to a REST endpoint, and concluding our video course. In this video, 12.1, Add PayPal Integration, we're going to add PayPal integration to our storefront so that we can check out and purchase our items. Let's start out by cleaning a little bit of this up. If you notice when you click the checkout button, if you're not inside of the actual store, then you wouldn't see your checkout. So we're going to change that. Let's take the checkout out of the category and we're going to go put it in the header. The header is always available so we can make sure that we always have the ability to hit our checkout button and see the checkout dialog. Now that we have our checkout appearing when we want it to, is we're going to go into the packages and we're going to add our PayPal package. So let's go in here and we're just going to put MRT colon PayPal. And that's the package that allows you to do PayPal within your application. So if we then go to our server and create a new file, we want to make sure that we keep our PayPal credentials on the server so that the users are unable to look at that. And here we're going to put Meteor PayPal, and then we're going to put, and we have to make sure that it's actually uppercase, and we're going to put the config here. So inside of the config, we give it the host, and that's api.sandbox.paypal, and you know there's different URLs for testing and things like that, which you'll find all of that out once you sign up for a PayPal account. And you get a client ID and a client secret. So you put the client ID here and the client secret here. Obviously, I am not going to put one of those here, but for the moment, we're just going to use this to set it up. So here we see we have our four parameters that PayPal needs to be configured. And now we can go in, and this package actually supplies already a template for doing the entire checkout process. So what we'll do is go right inside of the middle of our panel here, and we'll just put a call out to the PayPal you know, dialog. So we have a PayPal credit card form is what that's called. And when you place that in here, then when we go and click our checkout button, we're going to see now that we have you know, the name on the car, the type of car, the expiration date, all the stuff that you need to do that checkout. So we still need to handle the form. So what we're going to do is in the JavaScript for the checkout, we're going to go in and put the information that's required to do that. So let's just go in and say template.paypal credit card form. Remember, that was the form that we used to do this. And then in there, we're going to put it in events. So we'll say that when the form is submitted, so submit and the form name ID is PayPal payment form. And then in the return function for that, we're going to put our event in our template. And then here we're just going to say, let's prevent the default action on you know, the template, which is to just submit the form. We're going to say the card data is equal to, and then we'll go to the template and get the PayPal, you know, credit card form and the card data. So this function will actually return all of the data that was in that form. So then we can use that and call meteor.paypal.purchase. And in there, we would put any parameters like the card data, and then we could pass in like a total. And here, I'll just hard code this right now for $10. But obviously, um, we're going to want to get that and populate it with the actual data. And then we'll say that the currency is US dollars. So by doing this, we're setting it up so that clicking on you know, the submit of the form is going to send this off to the PayPal with all the parameters that were entered. And if there's an error, we want to just put that in the console for now. And you know, if there is a response, then we'll just say console the response for now, the results. So um, we need to make sure that our function is going to give us an error and results. So 
we'll go ahead and put that here in the callback function. So then if we go back to our cart, one thing that we'll, we can do is set a session variable when we create the total of like cart total, and then we'll put in the total there. So now we have the total accessible to us. So when we go back into our JavaScript, we can actually change this to say, you know, that if the session get, you know, and we'll say cart total, and that should be a number if we're going to compare it to zero. So let's just make sure that it's going to be a number and we'll put number around that and that will return a number and we'll say if that's greater than zero then obviously you know there's an amount to send to paypal otherwise if it's just zero we have no reason to try to charge the card so then here if it's greater than zero then we'll use that session variable the cart total to send off to you know the um, purchase so here we'll replace the 10 with session get cart total and then we know that when we submit this it's going to submit it for whatever amount um, they have in their cart at that time so um, the next thing that we can do is go into our template and just below you know this checkout section we can put the actual um, total so that it appears on the form when they're checking out and you know you can format this however you want to but the point here is that you know we'll make sure that we have a helper which is the cart total and all we're going to do is return the session variable which is cart total and basically what that means is that now cart total should appear on our checkout form so um, once we refresh this and we go to our cart Still trying to refresh here. Um, and hit checkout. We see up there that it says 134. Now we probably want that to look like currency, so we'll just go ahead and put, you know, inside of the template itself, we already have a helper for currency, so we'll just put currency. So then currency cart total, and that will make sure that this appears as, you know, in a dollar amount at the top of our form. So what we'll do now is go back into our form and just take a look at this and we'll see that in the checkout window that we have you know 134 dollars and then you could fill in all your information and basically you're able to check out with that so the next thing that we'll do is just clean this up a little more since the name in the cart is kind of truncated and we really don't need an image there Basically, we took out the image and we're going to replace that with at least 25 characters so that we can fit quite a bit more of the description there. And then in our string helper, what I want to do is I don't want this dot, dot, dot unless the value or the length of the string is longer than our permitted amount. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and say if, you know, the input text is greater than the string length. So we'll take the length of the input text, compare it to the string length, and if it's bigger than that, then we want to do this stuff in between. So, and you know, we'll actually declare this shortened in front of that. And so then we can say shortened is equal to this. And now we could say else, and then say that shortened, you know, is equal to the input text but um, there's a better way to do that, which is to actually, you know, instead of doing this, we could just take off the else statement and declare that shortened is equal to the input text up here in the beginning. So we'll say shortened is equal to the input text. We'll get rid of the else statement because we don't need that any longer. And then basically, if it's greater than the length of the string permitted, it will return a shortened value. So we see the entire description now is in the cart. So it says Apple Crisp and Almost Paradise. So, so that will complete our PayPal integration. Let's move on to the next video, which is connecting a REST endpoint.